So God was saying, I'm connecting you back to myself now by new birth. I am a spirit and that was what Adam lost. So when you make altar call, it's not just confessing, you're getting back the divine presence that left who? Adam. So every time a man gives his life, what was what died in Adam was gotten back. New birth does not reform you, it decreases you. Consciousness of his presence. That's the message, part one. Consciousness of his presence. The H is capital H because it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Consciousness of his presence. You will use capital what? H, not, capital, not small H. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help every one of us. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. Now it is true that divine presence is your stronghold in the race of life. But for you to enjoy it, you must know what to do. God is a person with a presence. His presence is evidence of his person. God speaking in Matthew 28 verse 20. He said, teach you that to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. What? God said, is with you always. Even to the end of the world. Is with you, but you need to know how to benefit from him being with you. Is that where we're going now? In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit visited. In the New Testament, he stayed. Now hear me and hear me well. To enjoy this provision of God with you always, you must be conscious of certain things. That's where I'm going. It's not enough for you to say God is with me. Two, four, seven. There are certain things you need to be conscious of before you can enjoy the benefits. If a president visits you and you don't know what the president carries, he can visit and go away. It's true? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So how can I Enjoy the consciousness of his what? Presence. Number one, consciousness of your spiritual status. Consciousness of your what? Spiritual status. That's where the benefit starts from. That's where the enjoyment starts from. That's where it starts from. Man is three in one being. You are a three in one being. You are essentially a spirit. You have a soul and you dwell in a body. Man is essentially what? A spirit. He has a soul and he dwells in a body. Man died in Eden. The first man. But when man died, his body was still alive. Because he was moving about. Is that true? Then that was his soul because he was still thinking. So what must have died in man? Because if I don't lay this foundation, every other thing can be built. It was his spirit that died. And that was the vital link between him and God. In Genesis chapter 2, 16 to 17, when God told men that no, you should not eat of this fruit, the day you eat of it, you shall surely Die. It was not saying that when man eats of the fruit, he will physically dead. That was not what God said because man was still moving. Man was what? After he ate the fruit, he was still alive, moving about. He was still thinking. 
So something a man died. Are you getting me? In Genesis chapter 3, if you read 24 to 24, 22 to 24, it says, and the Lord said, behold, the man is become one of us. And God had to drive men out of the garden of what? Eden. Man was separated from God. When that spirit that was in man died, it was no longer fit to enjoy divine presence. That was where man lost divine what? Presence. What left man was divine presence of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? When the Bible said man died, divine presence left him. Are you getting me, sir? Not that he died and the cotton was on his nose, no. Divine presence left him. But hear this. And Adam was chased out of where? Eden. So he was chased out of divine presence. But what we lost in the first Adam, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, came to restore. So you can enjoy all the benefits of that status right now. Is that clear? Now, redemption, what we call new birth, reconnects you and I back to divine presence. When you are born again, you are connected back to what? Divine presence. Are you getting me, sir? In John chapter 3, if you read 3 to 7, the Bible declares that Jesus answered and said unto him, very, very something, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second day of his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very, I said unto you, except a man be born of water and of what? Except a man be born of God. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, the spirit is God himself. Because God is a what? So that which is born of your biological parents is a flesh. And that which is born of God is also God. But let me put it that way. Is that clear? Are you, are you getting me? So God was saying, I'm connecting you back to myself now by new birth. I am a spirit and that was what Adam lost. So when you make altar call, it's not just confessing, you're getting back the divine presence that left who? Adam. How many can flow with me? Are you, can you get what I'm talking about? So every time a man gives his life, what was, was died in Adam was gotten back. Okay, verse 7. He said, marvel not that I said, you must be what? Born again. Now listen. So redemption, which is new birth, connects you to divine what? Presence. New birth does not reform you. It recreates you. You become a new creature. You became what? If any man be in Christ... 7 Corinthians 5, 17. He is a new, complete new creature. All things are possible. All things are become what? New. So new birth gives you a new status which qualifies you to enjoy divine presence. However, hear yeah, this. This is where I'm going. It's not enough to be born again. You must be conscious that God is a spirit and you can only have access to him through your what? Spirit. Because you are also what? Spirit. John, where we read 4, 23, 24. But the hour cometh, and now is when he through worship, I shall worship the Father in spirit. And in truth, for the Father seeketh so to worship him. God is what? And did I worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. Then it is very important for you to come to a position where you appreciate your spiritual status, work, W-A-L-K, and operate in the consciousness of the same. That you are not just an ordinary person. You are also what? A spirit. I mean, understand where I'm going. That you are not just the same you. You are now what? That's if you are born again. Now, let me lay the foundation in a better way. Psalm 82, 5 to 7. Psalm 82, 5 to 7. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk in darkness. 
All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of what? But he said, ye shall die like men. That means that death does not mean physical death. And fall like one of the princes. He's saying, if you don't know this, you will suffer like a sinner. That's the meaning. If you don't know that you are not born of the spirit, if you don't have a knowledge of it, whatever happens to the sinners will happen to you. Say, God forbid. So it's not a prayer issue. It's a knowledge issue. Are you getting me? It's not something you pray for. It's something you need to know. That's what Paul said. That I may know, not that I may pray. Are you getting me? It's not a prayer issue. Do you know many people pray without knowledge of their spiritual consciousness or with a new status they didn't say to the air. They see four victims of circumstances of life. So it's not a prayer issue. It's what? A knowledge issue. So here. Now listen. Paul knew. Paul what? This is a prayer. He said that I may know him. He didn't say that I may pray him. So it's not a prayer issue. That's why you need teaching. Listen carefully. Now listen. Many Christians have lived as ordinary people for so long that they have lost their spiritual identity to the carnal environment. So they struggle like that because they always think they are the same. Even when they are born again, they say, what can a man do? See me now, guys, don't play me. You know, that's African slangs. Listen. When you work, W-A-L-K, in the consciousness of your spiritual status, it will level every problem in your life. Until you are spiritually conscious, you cannot enjoy divine presence in truth. When you are born in your natural setting, you are born as a natural being. As a what? You are flesh. But when you got born again, you are not just spiritual. Listen. When you are born again, you are not just what? You are a spirit. And the Bible says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8, 6. So you need to renew. You need to what? Your understanding of your status in Christ. That I am not just the same person who used to be the same. Now listen. Let me explain. Is there anybody who has not made altar call? Just one person. You are, you are ready to give your life today to Jesus. I'll use the illustration. Somebody who has not been born again, come out. One person who is not born again, you want to give your life. I'll use you as illustration. Is there anybody who has not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior? Come to the front. So all of you have accepted Jesus? Yeah. You don't invite new souls. One person who is not born again, come. You are use. And you'll be, your life will just turn. Come now, come. Okay, come. Okay, two of you come. No problem. Now, Omo. Excellent. Okay. You hear what I talk? Okay. What's your name? Dennis. Dennis. Dennis what? If you want to Oh, hi. <laughs> What's your name? George Etekamba, George. Two of you are from Akwebom. Okay, no problem. Now, listen. I'm going to do something. That which is born of the flesh. This man, what did you say? Etegedom? Efyong. Okay, let me talk about Efyong. That which is born of Efyong is Efyong. That's why it's born of the flesh. That is born of who? Etekamba. Etekamba. Don't laugh. It's Etekamba. This was their natural lineage. This was what? This is their natural lineage because I've not made what I call. This is their natural lineage. This is the Adam that died. Is inside them. You understand now? This point, at this point, they are disconnected from divine presence. They are disconnected. Now, two of you say after me. Open your, your face. Why are you keep your face down? Look at me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I accept you. I accept you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord, as my Lord and, Savior. and Savior. I believe. I believe you died, you died and, rose and rose to save me, to save me. Right, now, right, right, now. Now. right now by this confession, by this confession I, am I am born again I'm a child of God, child of in, God. Jesus in Jesus name with this confession they are reconnected to divine presence do you understand what I'm saying what died in Adam is not giving back in Christ to these two people 
Do you understand now? So the day you gave your life to Jesus, there was a shift in the spirit. You shifted from your biological lineage. Now, at this moment, they are no longer, everything of Ephiong can have no power on this man again. It's only everything about God that have power over him. That's why it is wrong for anybody to tell you you're suffering from your lineage. This man's lineage has shifted from Ephiong to God's lineage. Do you understand now? So the only thing that can work in this man now is the things of God. But this man has to know the truth to be a beneficiary of those things. That's where knowledge comes in in teaching. See where I'm teaching now? Now, his language has what? Shifted. But he has to know what are the benefits of his new language. Otherwise, Satan can still deceive him that the things of Ephraim is still working in his life. I've been bending your face since this boy. So I hear. So you need understanding. You need what? Understanding of your new status in Christ. Say, so lift your right hand and say, Father, give me deep understanding of my new status in Christ. Holy Spirit, make me to be conscious of you in my life. Amen. Stay tuned. David Abume will be right back. In the hustle and bustle of life, it's easy to neglect your spiritual well-being. But what if you could find a way of connecting with God each morning, even in the midst of your busy schedule? Join the online morning devotion your daily 30-minute sanctuary of peace and reflection every Monday to Saturday at 7 a.m. for a soul-nourishing experience that will set the tone for your entire day. Since 2020, I've had an overactive hormonal imbalance. I've not been able to see my period monthly without taking hormonal drugs. So I placed my hand on my tummy during the personal prayers and I prayed. And to my amazement and to the glory of God, my period came out for the first time since 2020. I'm just here to give all the glory. During the morning devotion on May 18th, Papa declared that we shall be fed financially as we step out. And that very same day when I stepped out, I was fed financially from someone I didn't even expect. And I was able to ratify a financial issue I had at hand. And brought to the morning devotion too, my team and I were expecting God for a promotion. And God granted us a promotion on 24th of May. And I'm here to return on board. You can send testimonies, including pictures, short videos, name and location, to WhatsApp on plus 234-904-919-3971 or plus 234-818-472-2826 or you can send via email omd at smhos.org visit our website at smhos.org forward slash live streaming and our social media platforms to be a part of this transformation journey don't let your busy schedule keep you from starting your day with God. Join now. They worship together regularly at the temple each day. Met in small groups in homes for communion and shared meals with great joy and thankfulness. Acts 2, 4-6 In your daily pursuit of a fulfilling life, you need the support of a spiritual family. A heaven where you can enjoy spiritual comforts. A brook where you can be refreshed with God's word. And a military backup for fellow soldiers in Christ. Enjoy these and much more in the Cell Fellowship, designed as a close-knit setting for your personal revival, growth, and blessings. It exists in three structures, the Home Cell Fellowship, which is suited for everyone, the Corporate Cell Fellowship, which is convenient for corporate offices and organizations, and the Unique Cell Fellowship, which is made for students. No matter your preference, there is a place for you. Locate the nearest Cell Fellowship Center to you and begin reaping the benefits today. Welcome to Our Salvation with David Ibiomi. Now, at this point, you need to know. You need to what? No. That's where knowledge comes in. So, wow. I have entered a new what? Family. Now, listen. In 
If you have any brother who is a Nigerian and he goes to live, for instance, in the United States of America and stay for some years, they give him a green card. From a green card, they can make him a citizen. His physical look remains the same. But his citizenship has what? Changed. That's how it is. That your physical look is the same does not mean your citizenship has not changed. You have shifted from earthly to heavenly. From natural to supernatural. From human being, permit me to God being. From Amali, lineage to what? God's lineage. Are you getting what I'm saying? So whatever happens to the Amadis can happen to you. Whatever the Amadis are suffering. So stop having that mentality and perspective to life. Because Satan will buffet you, attack you, as long as you keep thinking that way. His greatest weapon is ignorance. When you are ignorant of anything, Satan uses it against you. I've seen men of God even say, you are suffering from what your grandfather suffered. That is what is making you to suffer like this. And then you go to do deliverance through. Some of you do it. Through. Yeah. Satan is using your level of what? Ignorance to buffet you through that man of God. The man of God is what? Ignorant. Two of you, ignorant. Ignorant plus ignorant equals ignorance. <laughs> My people are destroyed. Not for the demons, lack of knowledge. All these things that people have bought to themselves, just knowledge. Just what? Knowledge. Now, number two. That's where I'm going. Please, I have to be a bit fast in my teaching because I have so much to teach today. You will like today. My God, you will like today. You love it. Number two. After you have known your new status, consciousness of the Holy Spirit. Consciousness of who? Holy Spirit. Consciousness of the Holy Spirit. Not just Holy Spirit, consciousness. Was Peter conscious of Jesus when he was with him? Yes. Every time Jesus, there was a problem, Peter, James, and John would run to Jesus. He said, Master, 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 you are with us, we can't be suffering like this. Do this. And Master would do it for them. True? Now Jesus said, I'm going away. They were conscious of Jesus. They were so conscious that there was no challenge, there was nothing about them that did not run to Jesus. True? Even personal things like tax, they ran to him. They said, Master, they said we should pay tax. Jesus gave them answer. Now, now Jesus is not with us. Are you saying we are left as orphans? That's why many Christians don't know. Are we left as orphans? Jesus has gone. Okay, God, you run to Jesus now. You can't see him. Through? So who is with us? And how do you run to him? Who is with you now is the Holy Spirit. Is who is with you now? Now, but you must know how, the way Peter was running to Jesus, how to also run to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be very simple in my teaching. Please follow me systematically. Are you hearing me, sir? In John chapter 16, verse 7, I'm a bit fast, please. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. This is just speaking. If I go another way, the comforter with the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He's already with us now. Is that true? Now, John 14, 16, 17, 26. And I pray the Father that he shall give you another what? That is another helper. Do I was helping Peter, James, and John. That he may abide with you what? For where? For what? So it's not going away. It's going to be with you forever. Is that true? Even the spirit of through which the world cannot what? Receive. Because the world does not. Because it seared him not, not knowing him. But you know him. For he dwelleth what? With you and shall be. Take note. He dwelleth what? With you and shall be what? In you. But the comfort of verse 26, which is the Holy Ghost, who the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you what? And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The comfort is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps you to live a victorious and fulfilled life. The reason Christ sent him, the Holy Spirit, is for him to come and live in us, with us, and for us. Is that clear? Now, so, if you don't know it is with you, is in you, is for you, you can limit yourself and don't know how to relate with him. Are you getting me now? You can live in limitations. Can live in what? But if you don't relate with him, nothing can stop you. Say nothing can stop me. Say one more time. Say one more time. Say I'm unstoppable. He can't be in me, with me, and for me, and I become unstoppable. 
Shout a better amen. amen. Now, that scripture where we read in John 14, 16, 17, take time to meditate on John 14. I said you should read the small book, Holy Spirit what? How many of you read the book? How many of you have it even? Tell your neighbor, you don't want to grow. It's a small book. I said, get a copy of it. This small book. You can put it in your pocket. Now, three ways to be conscious of his person. Three ways to be conscious of what? There are three ways to be conscious of his person. There are three ways you have to be conscious of his person. Are you getting me, sir? The three ways are in you, with you, and what? For you. Are you getting me, sir? Number one, read Roman figure one because we are under one and two. Are you getting me now? So you are seeing number two, consciousness of the Holy Spirit. So now use Roman figure what? One. God in us. That is Holy Spirit what? In us. John 14, 16 and 17. I will pray the Father. And they shall give you another word. Comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of the womb, the world cannot receive because he said him not. That I know it him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I mean, understand. If it's your Bible underlined with you and in you. Where is the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Spirit? Is he in you? Are you conscious? Pray this prayer after me. Wherever you are, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from there to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you the Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. If this message blessed your life, or you need someone to pray with you, feel free to call us on plus 234-811-470-9570 or plus 234-904-303-0711. We are here to listen and support you. Follow David Ibiomi online for daily prophecies and wisdom quotes for living via Instagram at David underscore Ibiomi, Twitter at David Ibiomi, Facebook at David Ibiomi. You can also listen and subscribe to the David Ibiomi podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcast, and much more. God bless you. Join us next time on Hour of Salvation with David Ibiomi. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries.